It now being six o'clock, I will call the August 20th Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded for Cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. Put your phones on vibrate. The first item on our agenda is we're going to take up the uh, special town meeting warrant. So I'm going to ask Mr. Russo to introduce for us. Mm. So we've been working a long time on the Atwood property purchase, and we have gotten to the place of having drafted an article for the warrant. And so we're going to go ahead and open, um, uh, go through a series of motions that will get the special town meeting warrant opened, um, the article accepted, and then closed. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we open the special town meeting uh, uh, warrant um, scheduled for September 20th. Do you have Second. to announce the time? Uh, at, oh, this is just the warrant, right? Yeah, okay. At 7 p.m. Okay. Second. So, second. Uh, John Trainer, second. I'm taking minutes tonight. Okay. Because All those in favor? Um, Aye. Aye. All right. And now I make a motion that the board accept um, and recommend the article, um, uh, uh, Article 1, um, that has been emailed to you. Um, with um, one note um, that we want to approve the warrant, we also, also want to authorize the chair to make such clerical and editorial changes of form only to the article as requested by the uh, bond council. Uh, the long and short of that is that we have, uh, our, our town council has submitted the article to bond council who has to go over and make sure the language is okay when we get to the lending part of it. We have not heard back from bond council we expect to this week so what we're what that motion leaves open is minor clerical or editorial changes that the chair could improve right. so that, that that's the motion to accept um, to accept and recommend I'll second um, so that's so Christine. all those in favor with that amendment mm -hmm. aye. aye aye okay and then um, next is um, where we can go ahead and sign it. So I'll pass this down. Um, I'm going to have you do two originals just in case Tara needs two. So is the thinking that if we had to amend this based on recommendations of town council or of um, bond council that those would be amendments that would be made on town meeting floor? No, the goal would be with that, with that, that hopefully this week if there was anything he wanted changed, we'd get it changed. Gotcha. At very worst, we could amend on town meeting floor. I think we'd very much like to avoid that. If okay. Possible. Um, I did see one email from Bond Council late today, and he mm -hmm. looked largely okay with it. He yeah, just yeah, had yeah, some pointers for, okay. for our Town Council. Okay. Just um, so if there's going to be anything else, we'll have it by the end of the week. And it, um, once we have that, we give this to Liz and Tara, and they put it through the process of Perfect. posting and getting it out. So. Um, with that, unless anyone has any other comments, I'm going to make a motion that we close the special town meeting one. No second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Christine seconded. All right. All right. So we Done. now officially have a special town meeting. All right. That's about six months of work right there. <laughs> uh, that will be at the Dennett Elementary School. September 20th, I believe it's 7 o'clock? 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I, so that takes care of that, and I, I think Linda, Linda Letty, the co-chair of the Open Space Committee, is here to um, give us an update on the uh, Atwood property campaign, I think. Yeah, Vicki and I, we're both co-chairs, are here tonight. Oh, Vicki's here too, the other co-chair. Uh, because, um, uh, Vicki and I and the committee have been working really hard since you all approved at the July 16th hearing the purchase and sale agreement. So I've been looking at all the elements, legal, financial, and technical stuff that's not as exciting, as well as educational and outreach things to how do we tell citizens now what's going on and get them involved. So tonight is the official launch of the campaign for, it used to be called either Atwood or the uh, 
Prospect Street property or something. But its name is really the Two Brooks Preserve. I like that. You yeah. like that? Yes, that's and nice. So, and this is going to be the logo for the Two Brooks Preserve. Woo! That nice. <laughs> that is nice. Sorry. And uh, that's done by <laughs> Susan um, Asaf's sister-in-law, who's an artist. She donated that to us. And Great. we all think it's very cool. That is very cool. So did did be, we show that to the camera? Yeah, we'll show it to the camera. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. She can, she can hold it. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, well you've probably you seen it, huh? I have seen it. Yeah, I can, you can just stand like you are while okay. you are talking to them. <laughs> okay. So, Actually, it should be Sue. Linda can hold it up for the camera. Yeah, that's that's been the fun part. Of, um, yeah, Linda good. should hold it up. Yeah, seven uh, Linda. Because the otter and I are such good friends. <laughs> but there are otters out there um, in the Two Brooks Preserve. And there are two brooks. <laughs> um, and there are otters all over. You see otter scat and things all over the place. So we thought that was a very nice name to sort of get us thinking about it. And then um, to show you, if you don't know where it is generally, this map is just a, you know, it's not the most graphic, but you know, it's off Prospect and Soul Street, you know, in the corner there. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's 113 acres, maybe more or less, you know, because of the funny titles, they go back so far, you don't know the exact acreage. And it shows about 15 acres of the old cranberry bog and the 20 acres of reservoir. There are a lot of forests out there. It's very forested. It's got a lot of wetlands and meadows. And as I mentioned at the July 16th <coughs> hearing, this property is part of the swath of land that's over there. It ranks in the top 20% of the healthiest environment, the environmentally most healthy properties and parcels in the state uh, because of its aquatic systems. It's very, the aquatic systems are very rich because they are, are, are um, they're all intact as well as the uh, the rivery systems and the groundwater systems and everything. So that's one of the reasons they're rated so highly is their water systems. But they also have all the uh, filtration that comes from the forests and the meadows. So in terms of pollution control, it's a really valuable area. So it's in the top three uh, healthiest areas in southeastern Mass. And it's in the top 20% for the whole state. So it's a treasure. And um, excuse me, it brings all kinds of good qualities to Plimpton residents. But it also has the benefits that there are many plant and animal species who are, which are of special conservation concern that live out there too. And the two sort of go together. If you have a healthy environment, you have more plants and animals that are going to be living out there, one of which, of course, is the otter. Um, and so it's also, it's good, besides taking care of the water aspects and the plant and animal aspects, it's going to maintain, help maintain Clinton's rural character, which we noted on the residence survey a year ago that was one of the top two priorities. The number one priority was saving water, water quality, water abundance in Plimpton. And the number two, just the same, was save Plimpton's rural character. So it fits into that. And thirdly, it's going to offer a lot of recreational and educational opportunities. Um, there are going to be lots of passive trails and things back there for people to enjoy. And we're looking forward to working with the school and other organizations on hands-on learning because there is so much out there that's unique and healthy in the state that we're going to try to get people out there to really understand it. So as you remember, the cost is 800000 That's the price we inherited from the purchase and sale. And as you remember, you voted to support three sources of funding, uh, CPA funding, money from bonds for up to three house lots developed in the front over there, and private fundraising from individuals, foundations, and um, corporations. So uh, we have um, been working to figure out how to get each of those. As Mark said, we've been taking particular attention the last couple of weeks on the warrant part of it to look at what, how the bond will work and to understand CPA funding and have an application in the CPA and so on, so on. And we are ready to go out and start talking with individuals. Um, so we'll do that um, in a few days. People are getting today in the mail. <coughs> A brochure that describes all this. Really? So each of you will have this in your box. And uh, there you go. Picking up this interstate. This is fantastic. It is. Oh, this will be really good. So that's the brochure that will go out to everyone in town. And it summarizes everything I just told you in some detail. And the other thing you can do is go on the town website via our direct contact, which is www 
twobrookspreserve.com. It's pretty cool. It takes you right to the open, no, open Space Committee's page. So it, you know, it's, you're still on the Town of Plimpton website, mm -hmm. but all the stuff is there. And we have the YouTube video of the July 16th presentations, because we thought with the experts there it was oh, really yeah. valuable, plus nice. the good discussion from the residents. That's there. The good articles that Abe wrote for the local paper are there because they were such a good description of the process. Um, and we also have uh, the brochure. We have a separate donation form and some other information. So people who want to learn more can go into the website directly and read about it there. Um, and what can residents do? It tells you right on the brochure. But first, they can come to the special town meeting, September 20th, mm -hmm. and vote yes. So we can go ahead and do all this. And uh, two, they can contribute because private fundraising is going to be an important part of this right. being a successful campaign, not just to buy it, but to get it up and running and to you know see some of the potential that we just talked about here. So, and it's a safety valve for us too. It gives us some more flexibility in terms of how we really roll sure. out the you know the whole parcel. So, and we do have, as we mentioned a month ago, even before we announced, um, we do have twenty-five thousand in donations. And uh, since then, we haven't been soliciting. We didn't solicit those; those just came in. But we ha do have strong expressions of interest. So, starting later this week, we will be going out and talking with people, and uh, look forward to uh, exceeding the sixty-five thousand that we had talked about. July sixteenth was our minimum, right. and we're aiming for one hundred to one hundred and fifty. That's what we think will give the foundation to really getting this thing launched, and that's where we hope we're going to go. So, um, so that you'll hear more about that. I'll say to anyone who's interested, is a tax deductible contribution, just as if you were giving to a nonprofit. A uh, town is tax deductible. And then um, Vicki has brought some special visitors. She's brought, first of all, some nice pictures from the preserve. I don't know how to quite. <laughs> sure. These are going to be at the library or whatever. Um, so, and uh, there is a library session, by the way, August 25th at, I think it's 10.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. People want to come over and um, hear more and ask questions. We're going to have right. that. And then Vicki, come introduce our special guests. <laughs> oh, so, that's cute. <laughs> they don't have names yet. We're thinking possibly a naming contest. Yeah, naming contest. Um, so Vicky painted yours. Her no, husband made these. Dave. Dave did. Dave did both. Yes, I have located. Dave Alberti. Dave Alberti did all that work. Is that one? And so he cute. He just made the stands and the, and the magnets now, so we can yes. bring them anywhere and put them. So in. So they could go. They're going to be inside the library, I think, and start in a few days. Yes. And with an exhibit that we put up there. So um, yeah, we think we should get to know our local authors, don't yeah. you? So there Great. they are. They are. There they are. There they are. And uh, so basically, we're off and running. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're broken. <laughs> 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 it's a I'm, I'm a menace. So you're going to have the school get involved in this? Well, in, in terms of the, which part? The, the naming. Oh, we haven't gotten that far yet. Oh. I mean, oh, that's, that's, that's down yeah, yeah, we'd love to. There's so many fun ideas. I, I tell oh, you, the kids would love that. The number of en energetic, really creative ideas for involvement. We're going to keep fundraising, even you know, because we're going to have lots of neat things. So the things that we can't do in the short term, because there's so much to get done, to to get it done by you know, September 20th in a significant way. Yeah. But what it's doing is generating all kinds of interest long term of what people want to do as a carry on. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Great. So yeah. So we'll we'll uh, we'll be taking up on all those ideas. So we'll take these away, so you don't have them here permanently. But thank you all again for your support. Oh, thank it's you. Key. Yeah. And uh, it'll be a fun couple of weeks. And we're going to have articles in the paper every Friday, sort of following up on all this. And the website's up. And um, you'll see some things around town as we get closer to town meeting. So. Great. And we'll yeah. probably put things on Facebook we to should, yes. 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 to support yes. this, um, you can, some of it to coordinate. To coordinate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's happening, but we're hoping people will pick up, uh, you know, Okay. Yeah, from the town's to page. The town. Yeah. No. Oh no. So, so we're okay on that. Um, and that's just the beginning. So that's it. But thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Wonderful you. job as usual.
I love these otters. I think they're so cute. <laughs> so cute. I think I, I'm thinking of otter cats, otter tchotchkes in the future. We all want otters on our desks. So think of the possibilities for otters. So we were just going to go to what um, um, Haju, so that Haju, uh, so that Linda okay. would be done. Okay. Um, so, are you going to introduce that um, in terms of the letter, or should I introduce it? Um, it's up to you. I, if, if you want me to. Um, so, we are in receipt of an application for earth removal. Um, this is for Harju Limited Partnership, and um, it's regarding land on Main Street. And the parcels are identified as Map C two, Block four, Lot six, seven, and nine, and Map C three, Lots eight and eleven. Do you want to see this? Mm -hmm. And the application was received on August 6th, and they have since received a plan of land um, associated with it. Down so I believe uh, now the me. appropriate course of action would be to um, put together um, packages for this and circulate it to the relevant boards and committees before this board tries to act on anything. Yeah. Um. And I, it is a reminder that we did craft and pass uh, the earth removal bylaw at the last town meeting, still waiting for um, district attorney or state district attorney or attorney general approval, and but a reminder to us that we still have the task ahead of writing policy and procedures. So we'll be working on that. I have been in touch with uh, members of the CONCOM and gotten a copy of that to them, and they'd be the very first ones to take a look at it. And hopefully you'll let planning board in particular know and other boards know. We'll have to get it digitalized. I think we have talked about in the future that part of the policy and procedures would be asking the applicant to send a digital form and so we can share it with everyone and so we're not running around. And Linda may have more comments at this time, or maybe that's enough yes, for now. Just briefly, um, it's a, uh, an application for stockpiling, which we did know about when we were drafting the bylaw. And it's a customary thing for agriculture to do, especially cranberries. And I, I quickly breezed over the application. It, to me, doesn't look controversial. I think it's they're doing it you know, the way we thought they would. Right. But it does need to go through Conservation Commission review and the other committees and come back here. But I don't anticipate any issues. I, you know, I haven't seen anything quick with a quick look. And it is good that they're getting the process started because this is the way it should work, is that it comes through the other committees who give you advice. And then we will have both the bylaw and its, its regulations, which have to be uh, rolled out too. But, um, soonish <laughs> yeah. you know, so and the more basic piece that actually the applicant did it exactly right they ex expect that they are exempt and the way we've written this is even if people think they're exempt that they come to us have the conversation rather than just going merrily on yeah, and the way so, we put it uh, in, the, in the bylaw is that you, you can be exempt and it will be acknowledged by us or even if you need a permit per se it's not because there's something, there's other rules that you didn't know about, but they just have to confirm that those rules are applicable. But in either way, it, this is a very open process. It looks like they did exactly the yeah. right thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't anticipate any, any Great. delays. Okay. So I think we're back to uh, probably appointments again. We're back okay. to John's end of the table. So do we want to go to Council on Aging? So, thank you for coming, <laughs> Joy. We really wanted to uh, get an update on some of your goals and strategies for the balance of the year. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, used things have been moving pretty fast for the last few years. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, the goal is um, almost a little break right now. And there's so much more to put in there. Than was last year. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, we want to thank you guys for letting us have shared space um, where we are right now. Um, and so, speaking of space, when you know when I came here, we were talking at the um, past director and I about um, you know the space in the police station um, being you know, kind of designated to us. This is what she told me. Um, but I guess that's not true. That's, you know, that's right. correct. And We're going to put... 
And that's fine. That's fine. We're going to put together a master plan so everybody yeah. will have dibs yeah. on the wish that's list, fine. and then we'll figure out. And that's fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, so our thing is, um, it's not so much about the space, but a permanent space, like mm -hmm. to. People say that they don't want to come in because of the ambiance and the place, and they come in, they come in here to pay their bills, and, and then they're like, I mean, we just got a sign the other day, thank you for that too. Um, but it's just the, you know, the thing that they, I don't know, they just want a, a space that they can call their own, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we're, we're fine with it, you know, as far as working during the day and that kind of thing. Um, but it, and this is great if you can use this space and that space and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's really about having a permanent space. Um, and, you know, we're not looking on altering or building or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I was even thinking of suggesting the um, uh, historic building. Um, it's not used for anything really except for our exercise group. Um, it is kind of, you know, the big rooms upstairs and there's only one lift there and that kind of thing. But so anyways, this is like a future conversation, but I just wanted to bring that up since we've talked about mm -hmm. space. Um, and while we're talking about that, um, the reason why <laughs> But thanking you for that room, but also for the kitchen, because we kind of been taking it over. <laughs> the Meals on Wheels um, program, Halifax has been doing ours for three years. So we just took over Halifax because they are renovated. Um, and, you know, it's probably going to take just, probably just as long as time. Um, so will that go back to Halifax when they're done? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so anyways, that was, we're just doing that to reciprocate. Um, so we're borrowing the kitchen too. It's not our kitchen, it's a lunch room for the employees. Mm -hmm. And we try not to step on toes and not try to overcrowd and not try to leave a mess and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But it's really not our space. You know. Um, so, you know, that being said, um, there's other things like um, we're trying to get the veterans in, um, kind of veterans in, um, and you know most senior centers have a veterans, you know, group room, you know, um, and they, you know, they do their thing there. Um, we have an agent here; she's wonderful, um, but you know she's from another town, and you know she's not expected to do, you know, she did help pay for postage for a custom mailing I did. Because um, we had 200 veterans in this town. And um, we just want to, you know, acknowledge them, have a place for them to go. Um, it, seniors and not seniors, um, you know, recognize um, Veterans Day. So we're planning an, an event, but I think we have that. Uh, if you will allow us to do that. Um, you know, and you guys have been very accommodating to, you know, senior activities and, and I'm sure veterans too. Um, and we're trying to, um, you know, incorporate other buildings too. So we have an exercise group at Woodlands. We have an ex a couple exercise groups at um, the um, um, historic building. And then we're also in coordination with the library doing different activities. We try not to step on toes. We, you know, coordinate with them um, to, you know, do things that they don't do. You know, if they have a sewing group, they're not have a sewing group. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, it has grown over the year. Um, we have volunteers now. Um, you know, transportation volunteers, other volunteers, we have more board members, we're getting them every day. I, people are calling all the time. And not just from this town, um, their um, kids from other states are calling and saying, can you take care of my mother, you know? So COA is getting, you know, the word out. 
Um, so anyways, we have um, the Friends group, which we do on fundraisers. Um, we do a big one. Um, we have a summer uh, fundraiser. Um, and the thing is, we, we don't have a big group yet. But <laughs> um, we um, are adding to that money with um, transportation money, because other towns charge for transportation. We have not yet. This, we just started this fiscal year. Um, and, you know, um, we're doing a big fundraiser um, that all that money would go towards that. And then it would be um, in supplement to the town budget, the grant, formula grant from the state, and then we have the fund group money. So you could spend it on whatever we need, like furnishings, anything that the seniors feel would make our senior center, which I can't call it a senior center yet, because it's part of space. So I'm just saying, you know, we, we are I'm working towards getting monies and funds to do that and trying to move stuff around um, as far as where it should go, like exercises paid out of grant, getting some other grants, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, I have um, employees that are paid by the state, which is the receptionist. Um, I have my outreach worker that is paid by um, the um, you know, formula grant. Um, also, we have uh, people that are pay, you know, pay just mileage to do volunteer driving. Um, but, so we're trying to be creative with money, meaning we're not spending it. We are trying to you know, save it and trying to do whatever we can. The Friends, the friends Group is a, um, for a, uh, a, a private one seat, and they can fundraise and they can get donations and they can you know do that kind of stuff too. So um, it's not really all about the town providing. Um, it's really just space we need, you know. Um, and we're not saying any specific space. We're just trying to figure out what's our own. Um, in transportation, we have volunteers, um, but. We do need to think about getting another van, and we put it in last year. Um, and the reason being is the mileage that goes up, the less the trade-in value is going to be. And we cannot accommodate handicapped people. Um, so I do want to go to the next town meeting for you know a handicapped van. And I mean, I don't know, you know. So would you be trading in the other van? Yeah. Okay, so you only have one van at the yeah. end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, the van that we have is not really, I mean, it's not handicapped. So, I mean, you have to, you really can't get people that are on, in walkers and hard to get in, you know, so we really have to have, you know. But, um, so we're kind of just putting that out there. And I, I'm not asking for a whole lot here. I just want to get it out all out there. But um, you know, it's just that we, um, we're trying to move along like other senior centers do, um, and just you know, do what we can do to accommodate seniors. I mean, we're getting calls every day um, for you know different needs. You know. Um, help us fill out this application, or help us get, you know, mass health, or we need, you know, today somebody was paying $900 for insurance, and she is on Medicare. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm. So I don't think they know, you know what I mean? They, they just don't know. And um, we just want to get it up there. Yeah, we're here to help. How many uh, people might think, you know, help them have, mm -hmm. save their Medicare money for, and, uh, How many people are on your board? On the board? Um, we have nine, but we have another one coming in now. We just had a new one. And they're all Plimpton people? Actually, tonight. Yeah. Okay. And then tomorrow, yeah, they're all Plimpton. Yeah, and then uh, tomorrow um, there's another... She's actually a volunteer that wants to be on the board. Um, so I think we're at our max right now. 
we had a couple resign, um, but we filled them. So two or three things for me. I really appreciate what you're doing. Really appreciate you coming in. I think we've been feeling a little in the dark of what's going on over there. I know, I, I, and I'm sorry. And I, I, you know, I, I said that. I, I think I need to like email the board and email because yeah. it, it's so everything that goes on is so quick every day. Yeah. There's something new. No, I, this is great. I mean, maybe you yeah. should come in every three months and update and us, or, yeah. or maybe send us a bulletin every couple of months, and that's that's really helpful. Um, just kind of as an aside, please remember, I came in a year ago and mentioned that uh, Community Preservation Committee, there was a spot for a COA board right. member. and I uh, mentioned that. I so I, uh, yeah. maybe I'll come in again and yeah, plead yeah, again yeah, for yeah, someone, because we'd love to have you guys represented. Um, because we have money over there too for for uh, for housing issues, um, I, I I think we all understand that it would be lovely for you guys to have a permanent space and a space to call your own. And um, I think it's probably the dream of all three of us up here that as we work on the master plan with the grant money we have, mm -hmm. an important piece of that is um, ultimately finding the space. Mm -hmm. um, all that may take some time. Um, no, and I, I think. Yeah. Everything's going along as usual besides that. But we have a coffee hour and we had a bunch of people coming in for the coffee hour every Monday morning and then we asked them why they weren't coming in anymore. They said it, it, it wasn't a senior center ambiance. It was like a conference room. And they were like, eh. we had to take the chairs and put them in a circle. and. That beautiful old room down there, I that school that room. marm room, that's oh, a beautiful too, room. That's, that's, yeah. that's got so much ambiance. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that was the comment. <laughs> I think, uh, well, go ahead, Christina. Well, I was just going to, my feelings are the same. It would be great to have some space for you guys. I don't know if there's grant money that would be available to help us build a senior center. I wouldn't think it would need to be super elaborate. People aren't staying there. You just need a working kitchen, mm -hmm. maybe an office for the yeah. nurse, and yeah. you know some offices, yeah, some big room. big room for exercise and just meeting. So this doesn't need to be a big elaborate thing, mm -hmm. but um, it might be worth pursuing if there is grant money out there because we do have town land where maybe we could incorporate something into the master plan, some type of senior housing, or if not on this parcel, maybe we identify another parcel of town and own land that would be appropriate for that. Yeah, and actually, um, I've been to a couple of mass COA um, conferences where they do have the senior center as part of the um, housing authority. Mm -hmm. They're on the, you know, whatever floor. And, yeah. Well, we don't have a housing authority, and I don't think we're going to have a housing authority, but um, you still need some space, some designated space. I completely agree with you, and I think you've done a great job, too. And there's not, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot to work with, right. um, but we're, we're here to try to help you. But, um, yeah, I think it, baby steps is <laughs> all right. I can yeah. really say. And just, just to be explicitly clear on the front and on the police, I mean, we just haven't had that discussion whatsoever that when they yeah. move on. I mean, I think there's going to be a big list of people that are going to be interested sure. in that, um, um, which doesn't mean that, um, you know, that, that COA won't get strong consideration. It's just I don't think we've had any discussion whatsoever well, yet. Well, we did take a tour last week, and it, it was... Almost like going through the historic uh, of, of building that because the, you know the rooms. Were Lots of small and rooms. It's and I get that. You know it's really I mean? not ideal. Yeah, it's not easily accessible. Yeah. No, it really, in my opinion, would be more appropriate for the, all of the. Mm -hmm boards that are downstairs to be up there. Planning, yeah, conservation, yeah. all of that. Okay. The what? Well, that's what we're talking about, yeah. But that's not great accessibility. The, the downstairs meeting room. Is it even in there? Yes, but the downstairs has a nice The big room upstairs is, I mean, that is a kitchen, so. Yeah. 
The problem yeah, would, if we were going to do it, we'd have to put it in an elevator, whether it's down here yeah, or at the whole town. They, they have, but you know, yeah, people don't like using it. Each senior would then have to take five minutes. <laughs> no, 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 but they, yeah, it's fine. Well, it takes a while. No, 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 it's not an elevator, but it's a lift. Some, a wheelchair, or in a couple of people up. I don't know what they call it. Linda had well, a question, too. I was just saying where you were that none of the spaces, the DHS building or the one out here, the old building out here, but it might be cheaper. I don't know if there's any grant money to get like an architectural advisor, you know, for this kind of thing on amending buildings to, to fit, you know, the need, the need, because you're gonna, you have two spaces, one coming up here and one in PHS. It might be cheaper to modify some of those spaces that aren't used very, I mean, PHS could be used a lot more. Oh, yeah. I, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I and mean, you get a grant to look at the men, instead of building something no. new, look first to see what it's well, Exactly, because it's not like it's, um, it's not a museum or anything. There's nothing in there. You know what I mean? It's not down walls. I mean, I think especially right. up here. Yeah. I what, know, in the, it, it money the old townhouse? Huh? The old townhouse? No, yes, I mean, no, 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 I mean, within the building. I oh, up here, yeah. Walls down sure. And, yeah, sure. Around but I'm just wondering if the grants are available to architecturally evaluate the things that are around. And we need to do the whole building. One, we need to start now thinking about this whole the whole building thing. before the oh. police station, you know, is moved into. Yeah, yeah. I, can see, but that I like the idea of... Christine's suggestion, you know, if there's grant money that maybe we could do something. Uh, well, and maybe there's grant money available for elevators, whether it's here or at the other. Maybe. Yeah, and I think um, the previous director went for some grant money from federal. Um, and I think it was federal. It was <laughs> but if it's going to be an elevator, it's got to be done right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While we're talking about grants, I, 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 I'm, am I remembering correctly that we had an auto dealership that was a floating an idea of a van with uh, uh, a their, lot of advertising their logo on, on it? Um, do you, are, oh, yeah, the wrapping up the van. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and that paid like 450 bucks a month. So that might be something to pursue. Uh, um, uh, I would think a dealership might maybe sharing a van between two or three towns, mm -hmm. and they'd get all the advertising and credit, and that'd be right. pretty easy. That thing. would be pretty easy. Um, I heard something from uh, Old Colony Planning, uh, Old Colony Transportation, that they wanted to try to incorporate Carver, um, Plumpton, and I'm not sure. But they were going to try to get a van that was going to accommodate, you know. That makes yeah. huge sense, it and sure I think does. that's the shared service thing that sometimes is going to work in certain realms and not work in other realms. That would be well worth exploring. Um, I mean, the way we have it right now is if anything is without, with, um, outside of a ten mile radius, uh, that we have to have volunteers. And because it gets huge cost outside of that. We don't have a man that can do it. <laughs> Um, but yeah. Can you clarify that? A little? So, if somebody's going to uh, an appointment outside of ten miles, we do what? Yeah. In their own car, or what? Mileage through old colony planning. They pay mileage. And why can't we use a van? Uh, because he's taking his appointments all day long around here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to to go to, you know. Quincy or, I mean, you can't go to Boston, I mean, because all the other people would suffer. You also mentioned, you also mentioned that people from outside town were looking at utilizing the service? Did I misunderstand uh, no. that? No, Old Colony Planning was talking about including Plumpton with their, um, it's some plan they have in mm -hmm. it's not. With no. some regional transportation. Yeah. No, I guess I missed something. No, I that you was she was is getting calls from people who are out of town for senior services for their parents who live in Plimpton. Oh, for, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Now I understand. Um, we get those calls all the time. The kids call. And my, my parents doesn't have. And that was one of the things. Uh, I don't know if it's still 
we're looking at. We're trying to find out if we can find a list of people who lost their licenses, who are homebound, um, who need rides, and that sort of thing. Because apparently it's, I don't know, um, you can't get those. Mm -hmm. You know what would be nice is if um, we could do some senior housing possibly on this campus or on another parcel and incorporate a senior center into the housing where there was um, like a gathering space for people to come that lived there and people that didn't, right, for bingo or whatever. And not only and senior, but gathering, right, all the, gatherings. Right, all gatherings. Yeah, absolutely. Right, an example of that is that the Woodlands there, um, they have, uh, you know, their own little community. And we're trying to get them to, you know, we, we, we go to their community, but we're trying to get them to our mm -hmm. thing, and um, they, that's where they gather. Yeah, they gather that adults. would be nice. Where, you know, and it, it just seems like, you know, a place that they would go. So, I mean, it's just logical. Yeah, yeah. So, I agree. It'd be even better yeah, if we can get a developer to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to see, uh, it, to the extent you can pull together, you know, what you think your requirements are so that we have a better idea. I mean, everything's a trade off. You know, we have a fire station that we're talking about renovating, and we've got the police going, and it's, there's never enough money. So, it's a but question. I mean, it's not really about money. It's really about accommodations, and, and it's not a whole lot. Like you say, it's a couple of private rooms. I mean, we need the confidentiality for the outreach worker and, you know, phone calls. And, you know, speaking of that, uh, yeah, do we ever find out about that telephone line? Um, no, because our provider who actually programs the phone lines. Mm -hmm. Um, apparently they're no longer in the equation oh. so Verizon did what they needed to do so it's been installed but now we have to figure out if we're going with a different provider or if oh. we can get somebody in to do more of a one-time fix to physically activate the line right. um, and the so that's something that we're pursuing but we have to figure out cost-wise if it makes more sense to just sign on with the service provider so that they're on on call and if different things happen with the phone lines or if we need to add new lines that that's relatively easy or is it worth paying more but just having them come out one time um, and activating it and that's something that we're still kind of looking into okay. um, just the reason why I ask is that um, the receptionist they have, she doesn't work for us. She gets paid for the state and I call her on her cell phone. She calls me on her cell phone. And she ran out of minutes last month and I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, and because we don't want to bother, you know, people so in here and yeah. And most of the calls come in on the selectman's line, on the 2700 line. And what I've found is a lot more efficient because I think some of the other offices were actually physically walking down the hall to alert your office that there was a call. Oh, they intercom. If you just, I, I started oh, intercoming, yes, oh. so that we don't have to keep. And that's worked very well. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of not being able to transfer, which would be much easier. Right. Um, but the framework is there, so we can pursue that so then, and yeah. get it activated and then I would say once your new line is activated, we should do a lot to publicize that, and eventually the calls will dwindle that are coming in on the selectman's right. line. I know, because we're all giving out our cell phones. And I was putting them in the bulletin, too, because I, I mean, I'm um, But anyway, so yeah, I mean, it's it's not that, it really just a couple of offices, a large room, and a kitchen. That's it. I mean, we're really not asking for a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're working with what we have, and we're very grateful for it, you know? And, um, you know, and we're, we're doing pretty good with it, I think, without stepping on toes. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, the boxes are getting pretty high in there. We're going to, you know what I mean? You know, we're going to kind of keep a, you know, I mean, I have to do that right now. I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, sit once a month with Liz and, you know, yep. just make sure. sure. So we know Liz be feeding back, and then every three months we can get back together with ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Like tonight. Um, I mentioned the club 
we talked about that. Yeah. The outreach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, uh, I haven't been able to. I've got a bad back, so I haven't been going down oh. there. But um, I'll make sure that happens. Yeah. I I have to say I'm I'm I want to make sure that the budget, you know, it's been going up compared to where we were. Now I know four or five years ago we were everything was volunteer. We didn't pay anybody anything. I know, I know that we can't continue yeah. that way, right. but, but you know, it can handle the state, the rest of the state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, and to the extent that you can ensure that you're in tune with the library, with the veterans agent, with oh. the different groups, because that's really important. We have a lot of people oh, I've been, yeah. that are doing things, and you know, library does a lot of things, and they don't have a lot of money either. No. So no. it's yeah, no, they, we share the costs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, a lot of stuff we, you know, we get, um, uh, you know, like just for instance, the Carvel ice cream uh, freeze of rope and stop and shop. <laughs> I get the whole ice yeah. cream social paid for. That's great. <laughs> you know, I mean, those kind of things, you know, they happen. And uh, yeah, no, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Things are moving along. And I actually talked to the guy um, today for the formula grant, um, the state. And he's like, I see you were in the negative. Like we were in the negative six hundred dollars. And um, he's like, let's talk about what you're spending on. But it wasn't that we weren't spending it on, you know, anything. We were just short from the year before. You know what I mean? And so, um, so we, you know, we kind of talked about what, you know, what we spend it on and that kind of thing. He's like, yeah, you know. So, um, you know, it's, um, I'm trying to get everything, you know, as much for free as I can. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Liz, maybe we can reach out to um, Old Colony Planning Council Senior Services and just have them alert us if any type of grants come on the books for um, creating some um, council on aging facilities or, or something like that. I mean, I don't know if, if they do or not, but it might be good to... Um, that would be good. That they're even at least keeping their, their, you know... Yeah, even for somebody to do an architectural review, like... Linda was suggesting because there's been um, another department had even had the idea of if we decommission the trailer out here could that be moved to a different spot on town owned land with some landscaping around it and kind of utilized for that purpose but there's been no ideal suggestion made that I think would really accommodate them so maybe we need to explore funding to see how spaces could be modified to okay. do that. Okay. Right. All right. Good. Well, thank, you. thank you for coming thank you. in. Thank you so it's much. I yep. make a list to, to talk to you about, so now I know what to do. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Joy. Hi, Jen. Do you so have the, a, something you want to talk to us about? Oh, I, um, I have a uh, Oh, okay. Okay. Do we need to do the Council on Aging appointment? Or, or? We can do, that do that. Do you want to do that? Yeah, let's yeah do why that. don't we do that first? Yeah. That's for Michelle Lanes. So I make a motion that we appoint Michelle Lanes to the Council on Aging Secretary until June 30th, 2019. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Well, we do the liquor. Perfect. Said so we can get. Okay, so you have the rest for the file. Perfect. Thank you. So this is for the one day liquor license, and here's the folder. All right. I guess we just read this. Mm hmm. So I make a motion that we approve a one-day liquor license, special license policy for... Is day? it Friends of Reunion Farm? Um, so it's Friends of Clinton, but it would be actually at the mining of this. Okay. And what's the date? 
September. September 15th, okay. And this is a charity event to, do no, to donate to Two Brooks Preserve, which we were just talking about. So, okay. all those in favor? All right, I'll uh, second your motion. Okay. All those in favor. Where did the motion? Who made the motion? John, John made the motion. Okay. I'll second the motion. And, um, and I'll say aye. 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 <laughs> all right, so this is beer and wine. Yes. It's at 27 Main Street or 271. 271 Main Street is the location. Okay, so it's at Reunion Farm on 915 from 530 to 9 p.m. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So a nice social event and a nice way to support the to support, to preserve, Yeah, uh, absolutely. I guess we have to sign here too. Huh? Oh, that's great. That's terrific. Thanks for Thank doing you. That. Yeah. Thank you. Should be fun. Yeah. Are you going to promote the heck out of it? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> I've already seen the uh, the Facebook pages. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. See ya. Was uh, I there somebody coming in to talk about the hazardous waste? No. Not that I know of. Okay. As far as I could tell, it was all right. Just acknowledge that it happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was um, arranged well this time so that the traffic went down below so that people just coming in to dump their normal trash uh -huh. could stay up above. Yeah, yeah that so, was smart, yeah. yeah. So it worked well. Letter to residents and our businesses regarding town bylaws. Uh, I know, Christine, you had suggested maybe one letter. Well, not necessarily one, but doing a letter to residents as well. Yes, I, I agree with that. I wanted to keep the business, at least my headset was, we keep the business separate and send that out to mm -hmm. them. Uh, maybe the one to the residents should be a little softer, maybe. Mm. I, I'd, I'd love for everyone to know. I'd, I'd love for it to be more or less an announcement. I hope that maybe the zoning enforcement officer can take a look at the letter before mm -hmm. it go out. It's a good and, idea. And maybe uh, Alan um, uh, bylaws review committee also. Um, okay. And I think that's a nice letter. I I don't remember if in the draft we mentioned the bylaws, um, we but did. really it's a whole yeah. concerted effort right. um, of getting our act together in general. And it just be nice to let the citizens know what we're up to and um, that we're going to continue to try to find the right balance of uh, um, um, well, the right balance on, on enforcing rules without it being overburdening. Right. Yeah. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. Could we include okay, so it with a warrant for the special? Yeah, include the letter. The letter to residents? Huh. That's so that way we say we have to find out because we were going with a low cost print option. Okay. And so that's why the spacing on the warrant that you signed looks a little odd. It was so that it folds over just right. Okay. And so we didn't go so on that to may two not work pages. Then. Yeah. Okay. I I'd be in favor of keeping kind of those issues okay. separate. Um, yeah. Okay. So we would just have to pay for mailing that. Yeah. We Can have you find a, out a mail permit that was actually just renewed effective twenty <coughs> six? Okay. A new um, mailing permit. So we could work with them at the post office and figure out. It's just going to be a um, one page thing. It wouldn't be a big yeah. big deal. The, uh, the dog licenses. When do those go out? Do you know? I want to say it's March or April, but I could be mistaken. Okay. We could just check with Tara. If it's earlier, we could maybe enclose it with that. Okay. Okay, but if it's not, then we can. Well, I don't they hope. expire in um, January now? Don't aren't you renewing? I know you need to do it by March in most towns. Okay. I don't know if it's different here. I'm just thinking for my own hmm. pets. Yeah, I'm not what sure. What I always knew to be. Let me see. I think you have until March. And then they're good for that year. Um, this seems pretty timely with the new zoning enforcement yeah, I don't officer think we coming wait, on, right. and with the bylaws presumably will be approved uh, by the attorney general September or October. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So maybe we should shoot for the end of September, so that will be good, yeah. Okay. <coughs> and I thought we had factored into the selectman expense budget um, a small amount for mailings of Perfect. this nature, so that would fit well. So okay. we're, we're, we have a draft and we're going to continue working on that, but maybe work on a separate draft, one for businesses and one for uh, residents? Is that I can separate them out and circulate it to the board. Be great. So why don't we take the one we've got for the business and run it by Allen, both Allens, uh, and then do you want to draft something for the just the resident? Sure. I had taken one and right. kind of softened it a little bit, so mm -hmm. why don't I separate that out into two documents and Perfect. resend it? Okay. Zoning enforcement. Mm. That sounds good. Okay. Good. Board goals for coming year. We want to economic development. I don't think there's a lot that's going on right now. Not right now. It's August. <laughs> <coughs> Financial management. Uh, we did. Liz had the uh, mm -hmm. team meeting. I think uh, that's going to help us get that piece of our business in shape. Public safety, we're still rolling along? Rolling right along. Uh, last meeting in public safety committee uh, three weeks ago, everything maybe a couple weeks behind, no real problems, no real complaints. Um, uh, I did a little tour today. The jail cells look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and off we go. <laughs> it's nice to see the walls up so yeah. people can ride by and see that yeah. something's going on. But actually, I, the, the, literally, the cells are concrete blocks back there, yeah. and it looks very solid. I think we're all going to be quite safe. <laughs> Grant? Um. I had a couple things I was yeah. going to mention in my update, but I can mention it sure. now. Um, we received word from Old Colony Planning Council that there are hazard mitigation grants available. So I was planning to sign up for the webinar, which is free, and it's an informational session so that you can figure out what you can actually apply for. Okay. What would that encompass? Um, it could be any number of things. Some communities use it to either develop or if you um, already have one, kind of renew your hazard mitigation plan. So that's something I'd probably talk to Pat Dillon about as far okay. as emergency management. Because okay. um, he's been poking around with some different things too through NEMA and mm -hmm. trying to make sure that the town is still up to date with everything on that end. Um, they can also sometimes look at different things like if you have dams that might need a special action plan or things like that. I think um, all our dams are gone now, aren't they? All our dams? dams? Around town, I think they've all been. Have they all been decommissioned? Down. Yeah, Did decommissioned. the Winnetuxet? Is that all cleaned up down on Winnetuxet Road? I'm not sure. I don't know either. With the wood bridges, you mean? No, that's yeah. Yeah. I know that. That's a case of the uh, the pilings rotting out so that it doesn't support the weight. That it would take for the big one, so that's going to come on the highway anyways, because they're going to okay. have to. That's going to be a big job when they do it. Um, so there's that, and then there's also I was told um, by somebody I know that there are emergency preparedness grants that are going to be available um, from the state in the near future, and that's. <laughs> Similar to the hazard mitigation, but a little bit different. Um, it involves getting grant funding for a consultant to come in, sit down with all the relevant people, say here at the townhouse, different departments, and identify anything that we think are weaknesses or would put us potentially in peril if there were a storm um, or a large scale catastrophic event. So you might say, you know, risk from falling trees or limbs um, or the fact I know during some of these last storms that we had back in March we were without power for a long time mm -hmm. um, we could also identify the need to have a shelter in place here like something a little that could carry people over for a little bit longer if need be so the funding would pay for a consultant to sit down with us identify any weak spots 
and then they put together a plan for what could be done um, to actually correct some of those hmm. things and then you apply to the state to see if they'll fund the actual work whatever it might be hmm. um, so that's sort of interesting it's kind of like a two-part um, funding process so it's worth pursuing I think at the very least sure. especially where we'll have a new fire chief coming on board right. um, and and so on I think it kind of ties in with the emergency management piece Great. can I give you one more um, at yes. the old Colony Planning Council annual meeting I, there was a gentleman sitting at uh, the table with me that was talking about the mass dot small bridge bridge program and it's for bridges that are 20 feet or greater in length and it's for um, basically for small towns like us and it's grants to do the work but the bridges have to be town owned so it might be something to look into with um, highway if we've got bridges that have some yeah, issues especially that wind affects it that might yeah. be a natural that'd be perfect yep so okay because <clears throat> that's going to cost a fair amount of money when i was talking to jim mulcahy right. a couple of months ago Okay. Volunteerism. Coming out of the woodwork for Two Brooks Preserve. <laughs> what I tell you, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. I hope we don't uh, wear those people down. We need them. That'll be, and there'll be a lot of ongoing work there. There'll be um, trails to build, probably a little boardwalk to build, parking lot to build, plenty of work going onward. So people who want to jump in on that will be needing help. Mm -hmm. Great. <coughs> Can, you know, as part of that, can you address, you know, when you have to get up and explain the maintenance, the ongoing maintenance after it's in place? Um, which will be volunteers, too. Yeah, because I've way. heard a couple of, you know, seen a couple of things on Facebook. And yeah, and I, to be overly blunt, um, kind of a little bit of misinformation, Cato's Ridge, for example, all the maintenance, every bit of it is done with private funds right. and private right. labor. And I think the expectation is that uh, the same thing will yep. happen at two. I think you should be tooting your own know, because yep. great job. Yep. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Technology? <clears throat> Anything, Liz? I think we're still waiting for Michael on a master plan. We're and waiting for him to write up the master plan. That was the liquor yeah. license paperwork. Um, he was also doing some work for the folks downstairs okay. as far as getting them set Just up with the copier and everything. Okay. So right. that's still plugging along. Have you been downstairs? Have you, have you pushed the no. space? No. It looks good. It looks good because we had to put in another desk for the uh, zoning officer. So they pushed all the files back, and it's not bad. Good. Yeah. It's now, rather than just a pit, it's a good-looking pit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, town administrator updates. Okay, so first we have, um, I'm working with the people from the state and with a rep from Eversource and Columbia Gas. We're finalizing the applications that those two utility companies have to authorize and eventually sign off on. And that'll be more money in incentives in addition to the 243,000. Wow. Um, but they have to calculate it based on kilowatt hours and therms, I guess, for the gas bills. So um, more to come on that. And once that part's done, um, then we have the authorization to proceed with the work. Uh, we had 25 applicants for the fire chief position. Um, chief Benjamino and I went through all of them and did our first round of screening this morning. And it has been narrowed down to six individuals. Um, so they will be the six people who go through the full assessment process. Um, the assessment process, it's interesting how they'll set it up. They're going to have um, an HR type problem for the people to work through as well as um, sort of testing how they would manage an actual incident by using like a simulation of program um, that's set up. So that part um, is exciting and it's moving along. We're thinking it'll probably take place towards the middle or end of September because um, one of the other things they're going to be required to write a program for us on how they would 
um, handle some different things with call firefighters and a call based department. So it'll take them a little while to kind of fulfill that assignment. So we need to allow enough time between notifications and the interviews. Um, we have not notified the six individuals yet. The other people um, who are not advancing were notified today, um, but those six we're holding off until we know the exact date and time that we want to schedule them for. Um, so that part's moving along. Um, Chief Benjamino and I are also working on setting up the bid process for that surplus fire engine. I think I mentioned last time Municipid didn't right. really yield a lot of results, um, so we're working on assembling all the documents we need to do a sealed bid um, process as opposed to just mm -hmm. posting it online. Um, but that'll be taking place soon. Um, I spoke with somebody from FinCom today and I think what we should plan to do is have me attend one of their meetings um, after we've advertised the exhaust system project for the fire station and once we have an idea of what it will actually cost and have quotes back, then I can go sit with FinCom, let them know actual numbers and we can figure out how we're going to work that because it'll pretty much wipe out the building maintenance account. And even though we'll have money coming in eventually from the fire engine, right. it's not a direct transfer right. um, and I'm a little reluctant to propose something that just wipes out a whole account without talking with them first okay. so we have to figure out the best way to do it mm -hmm. um, the old townhouse we haven't received any um, quotes yet for the painting in the windows but we've received a lot of interest from prospective bidders so multiple um, entities have request the specs and the prevailing wage rates Good. So I'm sure we'll get some items in on that. Um, and I did follow up um, more for Christine. I put a call into District 5 about that STRAP grant opportunity um, for the population less than 7,000. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that Christine had mentioned was available and I had received a notification about. And we were looking into possibly that ring road area and utilizing it for paving. Um, but when we ran it by highway, they thought that somehow it affects local aid. Um, and they had already done one a while back. And it just, it sounded a little bit odd. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So I put a call into District 5 and I'm right. waiting to hear back. I think we missed the window, but it's something to keep in mind for next year. It is. Um, I think that, well, I know that they do it every year. Um, and we could also figure out at that point if it's better to just kind of roll it in with the Chapter 90 money. Might or be. It's a lot it's, of money. If it's just better to do next right. year as a standalone um, project. So that's been going on. Um, we've been busy. And let's see, we're now correspondents. Um, we have requests from Council on Aging to utilize the town green. Um, one is on September 16th. Um, and this is for Friends of Plimpton COA. And then the other request is also for the Town Green on November 12th. And this is a joint event with Council on Aging and Veterans. What are they doing exactly? Um, it looks like they're doing sort of a, a cookout um, for both of these events. The Veterans one is going to be a ceremony at the Green followed by lunch here at the Townhouse. And then the, um, the September event looks like it's going to be a cookout type setup. Um, and they're going to park at the townhouse lot um, and they're going to be serving hot dogs. Um, okay, so the September one is also, oh, this is, okay. It's a bake sale, yard sale, craft sale, book sale fundraiser. Here? Um, it looks like on the town green. And this um, is Council on Aging? Yes. Would you make sure that they're locked in with the uh, library? Yes, one? I will do that. Um, the veterans one, um, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's actually the ceremony is a flag demonstration. Um, and they'll be taking down all the decorations that same day. So Roxanne should be tied into that one. I'm sure she is, but I think we should make sure. Um, if you sign this tonight, um, 
I think I might take these and hold on to them and run them by some of the departments. Good. Just to make mm -hmm. sure that. Good. So our motion should be dependent on other department right. approval. Anyway. I would do it contingent upon right. um, the other departments right. signing. Okay. So I'll make a motion we approve each of these applications contingent on other departments' approval as well. All right. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, um, then we have this certificate that keeps getting left around the townhouse um, and other places in town. Bree found one on a gas pump. What is it? It's looks like it has to do with the establishment of Plimpton. Um, it's interesting. The establishment by the grace of God of the kingdom of Great Britain and Northern England and other realms and territories. It's interesting. It was sent specifically to the selectman's office and then um, Head of the Commonwealth, of Defender of the Faith, do hereby dissolve the state of Massachusetts dissolve recognition of the state of oh we're succeeding seceding yeah and it's come in numerous times <laughs> interesting okay yeah. so that's is this like uh, Martha's Vineyard where every year they try to secede the, from the I don't state? know they keep mailing it to us can I, so can I take a look I would, I'd, like to, I'd like to get a copy of that along the way I'll check in with you <laughs> and then Bree found another one elsewhere in town um, but they've mailed it numerous times. Now, All right. So. Yeah. Good um, luck to them. Is that what this establishment of Plumpton certificate is? is yes. That okay. Um, um, so that we can say it was received. Okay. Um, <laughs> received. So Plimpton Halifax <laughs> Express, we have um, artist Elsie Goldstein has work on display at the Plimpton Public Library through August. Um, and there are some very nice photos in here. Um, more Tales of Old Plimpton and the Dennett bus routes have been assigned and published. And that does it for correspondence. <coughs> I've got one or two updates. We want to do that. The uh, talked about the sound system, having somebody come in and look. Mm -hmm. So next Monday or Tuesday, I'm waiting for August to get back to me, but next Monday or Tuesday they're going to come in, and on Wednesday and Thursday uh, there's a company called Access Audio Video that um, Area 58 actually works with. And they're going to come in and take a look. So we'll see whether this is something we can do, what kind of money we're talking. Okay. And then, uh, unclear to me how we left the flag policy last Slickman's meeting as far as putting flags up on the telephone poles, because I kind of like to move forward on that. Oh. Did we, I did we get like that we too? were all enthusiastic about it. I think I'm we just sure wanted we... to get a price. Okay. Okay, I'll work with Steve then to get a price. Yeah, that, that's good. He'd be good. Yeah. I had sent something to Kingston to ask them, but I didn't oh, okay. hear that. Okay. Some right near your office, not There's what? Some right near your office in Kingston. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they have Evergreen, Main, Summer Street. Yeah, it the looks it's place. very pretty. Yeah. It really is nice. And I kinda like your idea. We put in some flags of yeah. Deborah Sampson. Deborah Sampson too. too. Mm -hmm. so. A little bit different, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, dates to remember. Well, it's like an open meeting. Uh, the next Two are September 10th and September 24th, so we'll be skipping Labor Day. Mm -hmm. When do we go back to uh, regular hours? I thought we did in September. I think the Monday after following Labor Day is we start so, a regular so schedule. There should be so one there should be one in between, the right? 17th. The 17th? Right. Okay. So uh, we'll add that. Well, maybe she left it off because of the special town meeting. I'm not really sure. Yeah, we have a special town meeting that uh, week. Right. And maybe we're seeing if we can do every other week. 
I didn't, yeah, maybe that's why. Do you want to leave it off for now, and then if something comes up that we need to address that week of special town meeting, then we add it back on? Well, we'll put a town meeting on, I mean, an open meeting anyways for the right. 20th. Right, so it kind of already gets right. taken care of. All right, we'll leave it as is then. Okay. okay. Um, might I mention the uh, Community Preservation Committee meets Thursday night. We have our public hearing about um, the Atwood property. and um, I mean, we have every expectation that will go well, and the committee will approve it, but there is that step yet to go through. Yeah. And um, we welcome public comment. Uh, anyone that wants to come to that meeting, speak in favor, and particularly if there's anyone who wants to speak against, we'd like to hear. Good. So, minutes. Okay. You got the minutes. All right. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of July 22nd as written. They're not actually on the agenda. Or July 23rd. I'm sorry, July 23rd. I'll second. Uh, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so that's the 723. Did we have uh, the 86? No. Did you you seconded that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I never saw eight six. No, no, eight six would have been our last meeting. Right. Yeah, right. So no, so we'll have to hold that. Yeah. But okay. we we did see the executive session from eight six though. Yes. Yes. Are we okay. Vote on those. Yep. May as well. I'll make a motion that we accept the executive session minutes from August sixth as written. Second. Whoops. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else we need to talk about? I'll make a motion that we... Are we going to do ransom raves? Oh, you're right. <coughs> you're right. And I know Mike's got one, so you want to... All right. Can I, I do. go? Do you want to go or, first? No, you go right ahead. All right. Ahead. So mine are, mine are quick. Two, uh, two raves. First is for all the volunteers that have come out to help um, move this project forward, the Two Brooks Reserve, uh, all of the, um, the community interest and people that who haven't necessarily been volunteers who are stepping forward to help out with this. It's great. It it's, is. I mean, this is what makes Plimpton, Plimpton so special. special. Exactly. Yeah. And then my second uh, rave is to Chief Benjamino and Liz for the fire chief screening process. I feel so confident that we are going to have a have some competent and qualified leadership over there. It's really so exciting. And it just, I'm blown away. Yeah. I am just absolutely blown great. away. So thank you. Thank oh, you so much. No, thank you. It's, it's exciting. Been a great process. And Chief Benjamino has just provided so much. Been nice. yep. My gosh, I know. We are so lucky to have him. Mark, mm -hmm. you want to? Um, so this is slightly long-winded, but there was one other article in the uh, uh, Plimpton uh, Halifax Express this week, and that was their editorial that was entitled, We Stand for Press Freedom. Um, part of the response to the Boston Globe, their nationwide um, request for newspapers to write editorials about press freedom. So I had this kind of cool experience last week um, in my home that was built in 1729 and a very strong woman was standing up and reading this thing aloud to uh, a bunch of people in the kitchen that were cooking and as beautifully written as this, spoken aloud in an antique cave farmhouse in a little tiny town almost 50 years before the American Revolution, almost 50 years before even this idea of press freedom had been brought up. Well, um, really brought goosebumps to everyone's, uh, um, uh, everyone, to, to everyone, regardless of the politics involved, just beautiful writing and beautiful sentiment and so much of what small towns in New England and this country are based on those kinds of things. So, um, Plumpton Halifax Express, that thing, uh, that editorial apparently was mentioned in the New York Times last Thursday, and so we've hit the big time. And um, I salute the editorial board for what they did on that. Yeah, job well done. Great job. Uh, I have two raves. Uh, one rave is for Dave and Vicki Alberti. Um, if you come into the townhouse at times, you will find a basket up front in the townhouse full of vegetables with this little <laughs> sign that says, please take as many as you need, all from their farm. 
the work they've done on Two Brooks Preserve and then the Hurdy Gurdy. I mean, it's just, they're amazing people. I also have a rave for uh, Biff and Allison McMenny from, uh, they're actually from Halifax. And they went in over to the uh, Plimpton Historical Society and weeded and mulched the area that the Boy Scouts had done a couple of years ago that was just overgrown. <laughs> They're not even from Plimpton, <laughs> but they love Plimpton. Oh, that was nice. So, uh, great to have them. Maybe we can encourage them to come to Plimpton. So, I'll make a motion. We close the meeting. Yahoo. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Aye.